He's always good. That's why I know I am blessed. part of Cornerstone Church in Maiden, North Carolina. We're glad to have you with us. It is Mother's Day, and we can't say enough how much we appreciate and love our mothers and our ladies in the church who do so very much. And I hope that you are having a very blessed Mother's Day. You know, when I think about that, John Quincy Adams said, all that I am, my mother made me. Abraham Lincoln said, all that I am or hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. Dwight L. Moody, the great evangelist, said, All that I have ever accomplished in life, I owe to my mother. I also read where Napoleon said, Let France have good mothers, and she will have good sons. And of course, we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 31 in just a moment. And Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30 says, The woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And I'm glad you're with us today. A blessed Mother's Day to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the influence, the continuing influence of our mothers. And Lord, there's not a lady in our life that is not absolutely important to us. And we thank you to be a part of the family of God, that we have many, many mothers and ladies who are so precious to us. And I pray for each one of them. Lord, on this special day, bless them with all the fullness of heaven. And Lord, may our homes be stronger as a result of our worshiping together today. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.
happy Mother's Day to all of you again, not only to you ladies, but to our men as well. Uh, this is a day where we talk about the goal and the importance and the influence of our mothers, of our wives, and we can't really, in words, say how important they are to us. In fact, our first and most influential teacher is our mother. And we're so grateful that God has blessed us with mothers. We can say this for absolute certainty. Every person has a mother. Not a one of us would be here without our mothers. And what a blessing of the Lord it is when our mother is a godly woman, loves the Lord Jesus with all of her heart. What a blessing it is when our wives love the Lord Jesus with all of their heart. And I am grateful for our mothers, Julie's mother, Faye McRaven in Fort Mill, my mother, Carol Dry precious, precious mothers to us. And we would say of them that they are Proverbs 31 women. But now let me say this. There's not any mother who is perfect. They'd be the first to tell you that. There's not any husband who is perfect. This is a goal for us to reach toward. In fact, when Lemuel, verse 1 of chapter 31 of Proverbs, when Lemuel writes Proverbs 31, he says in verse 10, who can find a woman like this? Who can find a lady like this? Many believe that Lemuel was in fact Solomon and that he was writing about his mother Bathsheba, that Lemuel was her pet name for Solomon. If so, the word Lemuel literally means for God or consecrated to God. But as Lemuel is writing perhaps about his mother Bathsheba, notice in verse 10, he says, who can find someone like this? So this is a goal for us to reach to. Sometimes we can talk about a Proverbs 31 person and almost immediately we begin to think, well, nobody can reach that high goal. And that's that's true. None of us is perfect. But this is a goal for us to reach to. Let me say something else about that. When he asked in verse 10, who can find someone like this, that would include singles as well. That would include singles. Listen, second only to trusting Jesus as Lord and Savior is that person we spend our life with, that person we ask to be our wife, that person we agree to be our husband. Second only to salvation is the person that we spend our lives with. So you who are single, let me encourage you, have high, high goals and be very, very wise in who you marry. Well, Proverbs chapter 31, and let's call this a mother's influence, a mother's influence. Mother's Day, when I think about Mother's Day, I think of a lady named Anna Maria Jarvis. Anna Maria Jarvis was born in 1864. Anna Maria Jarvis's mother was Anna Reeves Jarvis. And Anna Reeves Jarvis ultimately had 13 children, four of whom made it into adulthood. And one of those four was Anna Maria Jarvis. She is credited with starting Mother's Day. Anna Maria Jarvis's mother died on May the 9th, 1905. On the next day, which happened to be May the 10th, 1905, they had the funeral for Anna Reeves Jarvis, Anna Maria Jarvis's mother. At that church, which was the Andrews Methodist Episcopal Church in Grafton, West Virginia, when they had that funeral for her mother, she gave everybody in the congregation a white carnation because it was her mother's favorite flower. Anna Maria Jarvis then began a letter writing campaign to establish a day to honor mothers. That culminated in President Woodrow Wilson signing a proclamation in 1914 where he decreed the second Sunday of May would be Mother's Day. Now, let me briefly mention the rest about Anna Maria Jarvis. Anna Maria Jarvis herself never became a mother. Isn't that interesting? She had a disastrous love affair while she was still young and turned her back on all men. She became disillusioned about the commercialization of Mother's Day and spent her final years actually in seclusion where she refused to see anybody. On the Mother's Day before she died, a reporter dressed as a package deliverer managed to see Miss Jarvis, where she said to him she was sorry she ever started Mother's Day. 
Isn't that tragic? Well, we're not sorry she started Mother's Day. We are glad she did. It gives us an opportunity to say how much we love and are so grateful for our mothers and our wives. Now, let me say one other thing before we get into Proverbs 31. There are a number of you, your sainted mothers gone on to heaven. And on Mother's Day, you are reminded of all of these precious memories Isn't that wonderful? But isn't it even more wonderful that because of what Jesus has done for us, we will see each other again one day, and I believe that soon. I am so grateful for eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus said those who live and believe in him will never die. And so some of you are separated temporarily from your mother. But let me just remind us that a great reunion is coming And so let's talk about a mother's influence, and that is the title of this message in Proverbs 31, a mother's influence. I want you to notice several things about this mother that Lemuel writes. Notice, first of all, her devotion is settled. Look at verse 1. The words of King Lemuel, the oracle which his mother taught him. As I say, Lemuel literally means consecrated to God. She has given him a nickname of consecrated to God. But then notice in verse 2, she calls him the son of my vows. That, of course, you can't read that without thinking about 1 Samuel chapter 1 and Hannah uh, when she made a vow to the Lord. And so Lemuel writing about his mother, she not only named him consecrated to God, nicknamed him that, but she said, son of my vows. But notice also in verse 26, it says she opens her mouth in wisdom. Notice in verse 30, a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. So I want to say again, her devotion is settled. What makes a godly mother, what makes a wonderful mother and wife is that she has in her heart settled this matter that God is foremost of all. And my dear brother, my husbands today, if you have a wife who loves the Lord, thank her for that. Take a moment on this Mother's Day to let her know how much you appreciate that in her life. Her first devotion must be to the Lord Jesus Christ. If she is firstly devoted to the Lord Jesus, she can be rightly devoted to you as she ought to be. And let me say something to our husbands. If you happen to have never trusted Christ as your Savior, the single greatest Mother's Day gift you could ever give her would be today to say, Honey, I want to invite Jesus into my heart. I want to ask him to be my Savior and Lord. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. There are not words to describe how important that is. Would you do that today? Would you do that? Husbands, wives, would you just be sure that you know Christ as your Savior? Her devotion is settled. She has not only her devotion to God, but then her husband and then her devotion to her children. And that's the way it needs to be. First of all is a devotion to the Lord God, then to the husband, then to the family. That's the way it has to be. I want my wife to be first and foremost devoted to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then secondly to me, and then thirdly to our family. Her devotion is settled, but notice secondly, her example is obvious. And here's what I mean. Lemuel's mother didn't just talk about how he ought to live. She exemplified it in her life. She didn't just talk a good game, but what she was teaching, she modeled in her life. You and I as parents know that you can't say one thing and do another and hope to teach our children those things. We have to be living what we say we believe. And that's what she did. Her example is obvious. Notice she says to him in verse 2, What, O my son, and what, O son of my womb, and what, O son of my vows? And these are the things, verse 1, that she taught him. Her example was obvious. She lived these things. And now as years later as he's writing about it, he remembers his mother and the things that she taught him. Do you think for a moment he'd write these things? If he knew his own mother didn't measure up to it, didn't try to do these things. Thirdly, notice her wisdom is guiding verses three through nine. She, what did she teach him? Well, here's in a sentence, here's what she taught him. She taught him to be morally pure and to abstain from those things that would tear his life apart. Now think about that. She taught him to be morally pure If ever there was a day when we need to teach our young people and our children to stay morally pure for the Lord, it is today in our generation. 
If ever there was a day when we need to teach our young people and our children, these are things that will tear your life apart, stay away from them. It's today in our generation. As we're in this pandemic, I've heard more than a few reports that there is more tension going on in homes, more abuse going on in homes. I heard that there's more alcoholism going on in homes, more drug abuse going on in homes because of this whole pandemic thing. Isn't that interesting? That is sad beyond words. And in the far sense, there could be someone that you know who is having this kind of difficulty, maybe someone even suffering abuse in their home. Let me urge you to get help. Let me urge you to find somebody to help you. If you want to call me, I will help you. But we ought not have any of this going on in our homes. And she was teaching him to be morally pure and to guard against those things that would tear his life apart. Notice verse 3. He writes, here's what she told me. Do not give your strength to wisdom or your ways to that which destroys kings. It's not for kings, Lemuel, to get drunk with wine. In other words, Lemuel, consecrated to God, son of my vows, who I want only the best for. Hey, listen, by the way, our parents want only the best for us. It might be that in our church, some of our children are watching this. Children, your parents want only the best for you. And Lemuel, as he remembers what his mother taught him, one, to stay morally pure, morally pure, and secondly, to guard against those things that would hurt him. Look at verse 4. Verse 4, it's not for kings to drink wine or rulers that desire strong drink for, because they'll drink, forget what's decreed, pervert the rights of the afflicted. No, you give, you give medicines to those who are perishing, verse 6, and wine to those who are needing uh, help of some sort. Let him drink and forget his poverty. You, but you don't need that. You don't need to be a partaker of that. Alcohol is tearing our families apart. Drugs are tearing our families apart. Her wisdom is guiding. She is urging her son to be different from the world. Now, if Lemuel will follow that, he can be sure of a couple of things. One, he can be sure that that kind of a lifestyle will lead to blessing from the Lord. But he can also be sure that that kind of a lifestyle will lead to being mocked by his friends. That kind of a lifestyle will lead to being persecuted by his friends, that he doesn't do the things that they do. I pray for our young people, especially when they graduate high school and they head off to college, and many of them for the first time are alone. Many of them for the first time really do not have anybody watching over them, but added to that, they've got a lot of friends now, new friends, who are urging them to do things they know they ought not do. I pray for our college students. I pray for our young adults who are always being bombarded by the pulls of the world. I pray for them. She taught him, stay morally pure and stay away from those things that will tear your life apart. If we will do that, it'll save us from many, many problems. I have a grandfather, Floyd Dry, that I never met because of alcohol. It is my dad's dad. I never met him. He died when I was young. When I was about 15, I think, something like that, I never met him. Alcohol took his life. You and I are living in a day where lives are being absolutely destroyed. People are searching for peace. They're searching for answers somewhere. And they will search endlessly until they find the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. He alone can satisfy the deepest need of our life. And so her wisdom is guiding. But notice her worth is immeasurable. Look at verse 10. Verse, well, let me go back to verse 8. Here's something else she taught him. Open your mouth for the mute. The word mute li literally means children of bereavement. In other words, what she's saying is, Lemuel, not only stay morally pure, not only stay away from those things that will tear your life apart, but Lemuel, take up for others who can't take up for themselves. Stand up for others who can't stand up for themselves. Be an advocate for them. Take special care for those who can't take care of themselves. What a wonderful thing, isn't it? Defend the rights of the afflicted and needy, verse 9. Open your mouth, judge righteously. What a wonderful teaching from a precious mother. But then notice, not only is her wisdom guiding, but her worth is immeasurable. 
immeasurable. Who, verse 10, an excellent wife, who can find? An excellent wife. The Hebrew word, if you care to know it, is kail, C-H-A-I-L, and it literally means brave or strenuous or good. Who can find a brave, strenuous, good woman? Isn't that a wonderful thing? When you do, notice the second part of that verse. Her worth is far above jewels. Her worth is far above jewels. How do you adequately pay what she is worth? Now, having said that, every Mother's Day, I'm always interested because, listen, one of the greatest callings of any woman anywhere is to be a homemaker and a mother to the children. Now, there are a lot of moms who can't do that. They have to work outside the home. I'm sorry that we live in a world like that. There are a lot of ladies who have to have an outside job to help make ends meet. But some can stay at home, and those who do stay full-time at home, I was curious as to if we had to pay you for all that you do, get your husband nearby, if we had to pay you for all you do, how much would we owe you as a homemaker? Uh, my wife, Julie, tried to stay home most of our kids' small life. She taught at the school for a while where the kids went to school. How much do we owe our ladies here in 2020 for all they do? Well, here's some of the jobs they have. Academic advisor, accountant, art director, athletic director, bookkeeper, buyer, CEO, coach, daycare center teacher, dietitian, education, event planner, and it goes on, janitor, judge, magistrate, laundry manager, maintenance supervisor, market manager, photographer, plumber, public school teacher, teacher, psychologist, recreational therapist, and it goes on with all the things that a stay-at-home mom does. So how much would we have to pay to have all of those things done? Are you ready for this? A year's salary. You ready for this? $162,581. $162,581. I thought about that, and I thought, reckon she takes Discover? Uh, will she take an IOU? Why am I saying that? I'm saying, oh dear, how precious are our mothers. How precious are our wives and all that they do. Let me mention something else while I'm on that subject. If your wife does stay at home full time and you work outside the home, be sure that she has some personal spending money of her own. Because the fact is you couldn't make money as you are doing if she weren't doing what she's doing. You couldn't do it. And so whatever you're doing, both of you are doing. Whatever she's doing, both of you are doing. And so when she stays at home with the kids, make sure she has some finances to just do whatever she wants. Just be sure of that. It doesn't have to be lots and lots, $162,000, <laughs> but make sure she's got some, okay? Her worth is immeasurable, immeasurable. So you can turn to your husband and just say uh, $162,000, please, and I'll take it right now. Her Worth is immeasurable. But he's talking to seniors too. He's talking to singles too. He's talking to singles too. He is talking to seniors as well. But he's talking to singles too. Those who are not yet married. If you, are you looking to get married? First of all, be the kind of person you're looking for. Find you, above all other things, find you a young man, a young lady who loves the Lord with all their heart. I'm not talking about somebody who just says they're a Christian. No, I'm talking about somebody who loves the Lord with all their heart. Make sure that that's the kind of person. Her worth is immeasurable. But then notice also her marriage is strong. Look at verse 11. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he'll have no lack of gain. She does him good, not evil, all the days of her life. Her marriage is strong. Look at verse 23. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. They know him, and they know him by knowing her. She is a great part of who he is. In fact, the two are inseparable. He is who he is because she is who she is. You want to see a great man? Just ask his wife. You want to see the measure of a man? Just ask his wife. You want to see the health of a man? Just look at the health of his wife. Because the two are one and she is absolutely in integral in his life. And it's imperative that she be what she's called to be and he be what he's called to be. The marriage is strong. Verse 23, her husband's known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. Look at verse 28. Her children rise up and bless her. We've heard this verse all of our life. 
her children rise up. The word rise up literally means they mature. They go into public. In other words, as her children get older, the more with age they get, the more they realize just what a treasure their mother was and how important her teaching was to them. Her children rise up and bless her, her husband also, and he praises her. Her marriage is strong. Her marriage is strong. You and I are living in a day today where there are a lot of marriages that are not strong. There are a lot of marriages having problems. So let me just say something to you right this moment. Let's, whatever we need to do right this moment, just stop and say, Lord, what do I need to do? Me, me, not her. What do I need to do to make my marriage more of what it ought to be? And I pray for all of you. I pray that both husband and wife love the Lord. When one does and one does not, that creates a lot of barriers in their relationship. And I can tell you this. I have talked to a lot of men and women. And so whether you are the wife or the husband who is saved and you have a spouse who is not, let me guarantee you, unsaved one, that the saved one would love no better gift in the world than for you to give your life to the Lord. Her marriage is strong, but then notice her work is tireless. Look at verses 13 through 19. She looks for wool and flax, works with her hands and delight. In other words, she is a joy to work with. She is a joy to work for. She is a joy to work over. She works with delight. A Christian employee ought to be unlike any other employee. A Christian employee ought to be a delight to everybody who knows him or her. She works with delight. She's like merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it's still night, gives food to her household, portions to her maidens. Portions literally means allowances. She gives the allowances to her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. From her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength, makes her arms strong, senses her gain is good. Her lamp doesn't go out at night. She, in other words, she works until the job is done, whatever the job might be. You that have small children know what it's like for the lamp not to go out at night. Uh, when during the middle of the night, uh, this one or that one's crying or needing something, oh dear, what a treasure you are. Once in a while, we were able to keep our grandchildren, and I am so grateful for Julie because a lot of times the lamp doesn't go out at night, and she's taking care of them. I am so grateful for her. Her work is tireless, but then notice this. Her care is expressed. Look at verse 20. She extends her hands to the poor. She stretches out her hands to the needy. She's not just watching out for herself, but she's always cognizant always aware of the people who are around her and what are they needing and how can I help them? Isn't that a wonderful thing? That's what a Christian does. That's what it means to be a part of the family of God, by the way. That's what makes the family of God so absolutely marvelous is that we just love each other. I am so grateful to be a part of Cornerstone Church. We have people just like that, our entire church, just like that. She uh, cares, her care is expressed, but then uh, let me say this. Her modesty is honoring. Let's not miss that. Her modesty is honoring. Look at verse 22. She makes coverings for herself. Her covering is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates. In other words, as Lemuel writes about what his mother taught him, she is a modest lady. She knows how to dress properly. You and I are living in a day, do we really need to say much about it, where it's almost impossible to find modest clothing anymore? What a beautiful thing is a modest young lady, a modest lady, a modest mother. Her modesty is honoring to the Lord. You see, how we dress says something about our faith in the Lord. How we dress says something about what's important in our lives. You and I are living in a day where not much of that is happening, actually. Her modesty is honoring. But then notice her reputation is acknowledged. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, it says, Her children rise up and bless her, her husband also, and he praises her, saying, Many daughters have done nobly, but you excel them all. Her reputation is acknowledged. Now, I could have gone through these other verses, but I want to bring this to a close. And I want to say, not only is her modesty honoring, her reputation is acknowledged. And modesty has a part of that. 
Her reputation is one that honors the Lord. When her name comes up in conversation, it is always in a good sense. When her husband's name comes up in a conversation, it is to think of a man who honors the Lord, loves the Lord. Her reputation is acknowledged. And by the way, notice it's acknowledged by those who know her the best in verses 28 and 29. It's her children who rise up and call her blessed. But not only them, her husband also. Now notice verse 29. He says of her, many daughters have done nobly, but you excel them all. He is praising her. Now listen, he's praising her and not just on Mother's Day, <laughs> not just on Mother's Day, but he's praising her all through the year. He is aware of what a blessing he has in her all through the year. Her reputation is acknowledged. I, uh, I read a, a joke some time ago, and it went like this. A four-year-old and a six-year-old presented their mother a house plant that they had used their own money to buy. The older of the two children said with a sad face, there was a bouquet we wanted to give you. It was really pretty, but it was too expensive, and it had a ribbon around it that said, rest in peace. And we wanted to give that to you because you're always talking about how you'd like a little peace and rest. Well, that's how a mother is. A mother many times needs rest and peace, and she has to keep going on and going on. But her reputation is known by all, and especially by her children as they grow up. As our children grow up, they began to realize just the kind of man and woman their father and mother are. Some of us are grateful to have our father and our mother still alive. Some of us are grateful to have our husband, our wife still alive. Some do not have that. Some theirs have gone on to be with the Lord. But whatever the case, let us so live that when our children think about us, when our spouse thinks about us, it's always a good thought. Lastly, her reward, don't miss this. Her reward is certain. Her reward is certain. Notice verses 30 and 31. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. I want to stop there and say some, that's all they care about. Charm and beauty, that's all they care about. That's the extent of their concern in life, charm and beauty. Oh, it's so much more than that, isn't it? Charm, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Her reward is certain. She shall be praised. Now the last verse. Give her the product of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. There is coming a day when God will reward every service there is coming a day when God will reward every act, every doing, every tear, every concern, all of it, God will reward it. And I want to close on this Mother's Day by saying to you and me, this is the goal. Bathsheba was not a perfect woman. There are no perfect people, save one, the Lord Jesus Christ. None of us is perfect. But that doesn't mean we, want, we don't want to be more and more and more and more like Jesus. I was talking with someone just the other day, and I said, you know, the older I get, the more I don't want it to be said of me, I'm sought in my ways. That's how the old people used to say it. I don't want to be the kind who settles for where I am. I want to be more of what God wants me to be. They may even bring that a little clearer. I want to be more of what Julie needs me to be. I want to be more of what my children need me to be. I want to be more of what my grandchildren need me to be. So that when they think about my life, they have good thoughts about it. And they honor the Lord because of it. I want to close on this Mother's Day and say to you, Oh Lord, how our homes, how our marriages need Jesus. And I want to say to you, precious mothers, your worth is far above rubies. You are a blessing to us beyond words to describe, and we are so grateful to God for you. And I want to say to our marriages, if you love the Lord with all your heart, 
then God will certainly bless you for it. But if you do not know the Lord as your Savior, would you right now on this Mother's Day say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, and I know that you died on Calvary's cross for my sins. And Lord, I don't want to live according to my own wisdom. I don't want to live by what pleases me. I need something greater than that in life. But more than that, I need my sins forgiven. And so right here, right now on this Mother's Day, I want to invite you into my heart to ask you to forgive my sins and come and live inside of me. And Lord, from this day forward, I want to serve you wherever you lead, whatever you want me to do. I want to be the kind of person that this talks about. I hope that you'll do that today. Maybe you're a young person. Maybe you're a child. And today, the greatest Mother's Day gift you could possibly give would be to give your family a Christian young person, a heart given to the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for all of us in these days, in these days where we're seeing so much chaos in our world, may it be said of us that our foundation is sure, our hearts are given to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that everything about us leads others to understand that we love the Lord with all of our heart. And so moms, happy Mother's Day to you. And I am so grateful that because of our trust in the Lord Jesus, we'll never die. And so while we might change places here, we're going to meet again in heaven. And all of that because of what Jesus has done for us. Isn't that a great thing? Amen. Well, let me pray for us. Precious Lord Jesus, on this Mother's Day, how do we, with words, say how much our precious mothers mean to us? And I could, in my own heart, remember playing at my grandmother's house when I was a little boy. She's gone on to be with you. And these ladies that you have brought into our lives who are precious beyond words and who influence us in ways that we could never imagine. And I am grateful, Lord, for our precious godly mothers. And I pray for all of our mothers, first of all, that every single one of them would come to know you as Savior and Lord. And then I pray for their husbands if they are married. If they're looking to get married, I pray that the one they're looking to marry is an absolutely committed Christian loving the Lord Jesus. But I pray for our husbands, Lord. I pray if there's any of them that have never trusted you as their Savior that they would do that today. Not wait till tomorrow, but today they would understand the greatest single aspect of my life is to give my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray our world over on this Mother's Day, do in our hearts and in our lives as only you can do. Lord, I pray for our precious children, our young adults, our college students. I pray for those who are starting to make their own decisions more and more and more that they, not unlike what we read here, will make decisions in accordance with what you would have us do. And my ultimate goal and our ultimate goal is that your name be praised in all the earth because that's why we were created. We were created to glorify you, period, period. However we need to do that in whatever occupation, our goal and our calling simply is to honor you and serve you. And I pray as we do that, Lord, guide us, lead us, bless us, we pray. And thank you again, Lord, for our precious mothers. For it is in the name of the Lord Jesus who himself on the cross was concerned about his precious mother. It is in his wonderful name that we pray. Amen.